now a few weeks on, how do you feel about it? What do you remember about it? What did you enjoy about it? <laughs> the canal crossing. Uh, as, as I said afterwards, I thought that it was the thrill of a lifetime, but I was really glad when it was over <laughs> because it was like high octane for two days. And you know, you got four strange people or five strange people on your boat during this time. You've got to feed them, you've got to make sure they've got enough water. Uh, so it was a lot. It was absolutely thrilling, but it was a lot. Please like and subscribe and ring that bell for Kariwa and follow us as we cross the Panama Canal. O seven hundred. December the 14th, 2023, the four line handers arrived with their lines and their additional fenders for the transit of the Panama Canal from the Caribbean side over to the Pacific side. Many boats use friends or other cruisers to help them. We made the decision to use these professional line handers supplied by our agent simply because our boat weighs 77 tons and we felt it necessary to have a team that would be able to haul on these lines with some experience and also they were able to engage with the pilot. We had a pilot, not an advisor, because of the weight and size of our boat. Okay, they're starting to get the fenders ready, um, hang them over the boat so that they're in position. I think we're going to leave in about 20 minutes. Engines are running. The first trick of the day was to get off the dock with a 20 knot wind blowing from astern and having to turn around in a short space. We ran a line from the bow down the side of the vessel on the dock. We let go the stern lines and allowed the wind to push the boat out into the channel while holding on to the um, long bow line. This worked very well and the boat swung round quite nicely. I was able to use the bow thruster to assist the turn, occasionally just dropping the engine astern to keep the bow off the dock. As you can see we came around very well. Um, this is all about planning and I was able to discuss the plan before I left with N6232 Captain Dave Knapp as well as the dock team at Shelter Bay. How was that Captain? Oh, that was pretty good, it went very smoothly. Oh, well, it went exactly according to plan. Yeah. Even when we hit 25 knots out here. Yeah, 25 knots, it was crazy. As we came through the channel. It's yeah. ridiculous. Anyway, we're out well, here that's now. 25 now, 24 now. Once we got out in the flats, the pilot boat arrived to come alongside in 25 knot winds and uh, three foot seas. Following that, we had a debrief with the pilot. Okay. Yeah. We are South 14 Delta. Okay. Meaning that there's going to be a ship ahead of us. Yeah. Are we going to be, there, there's going to be another one. And they're gonna be it's gonna be us in the same chamber. So two ships and us. Yes. Okay. Big ship and small ones. Okay. Cavalier Royal, and uh, alongside a tugboat, and we go by ourselves alongside the wall. The wall. Oh, so we're gonna do a wall. Yes. We're gonna go to the wall. That's gonna be. We're gonna go to the west side of the locks, which means we're gonna have. We're gonna be starboard side alongside. Starboard the wall. side alongside with the, with the ropes. Okay. The okay. guys. I, I saw that the guys are. I know these guys. Uh, So this ship is a tanker and it's just come through the canal and we are heading in. The tanker is called Mambo, Mambo number five. We're about to go under the bridge. Our pilot's got us doing four knots and I think my captain's getting antsy because he sees all the other boats have disappeared into the lock or around the corner and he thinks he's getting left behind but our guy says that we need to wait for even the tug, the last tug, to be in position before we go in. So we're not going to get left behind. This is another pilot boat. His name is Swordfish. 
and <laughs> he's gonna come alongside shortly. Here he comes. the document signed it's now time to continue up the channel towards the entrance of the Panama Canal. On arrival we have to drift around a little bit while we wait for the big ship to pre-position itself and then we follow in behind the tugs. Years working now over Disney Cruise Lines. Okay. Uh, but before that I went through different companies. I went to uh, NCL Okay. Royal Caribbean, yeah. Celebrity Cruises. Wow. Yes. Well, where did you go to Sea School? Where? Sea School, where did you go? Oh, uh, the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, New York. Oh, Kings uh, Point. Kings Point? Yes. Yeah, so you're a Kings Pointer? Yeah, I am. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Amazing. Yes. And you're even a nice guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my nerves are shattered. Absolutely shattered. Turns out there was only one line handle ashore to take our lines. Um, so we had a slight delay as we approached the aft end of the tug. Line on the aft section. I don't know how the hell they're going to pull this boat though. The wind. They've got a wind shock there. Okay, they're coming in. So, I'm glad we've got line handlers that I don't have to be doing this with friends. Could be quite stressful. Yeah, the stern's in a lot more now. They're still pulling us in. See how far up we've come. You can see the water level now, it's almost at the top of the lock. So we're nearly there for the first one. That doesn't take very long actually. Yeah, I'm impressed. Guarding this precious boat from these rough side walls. There's an aft view of the lock gate with the bridge in the far distant background. So this ship is called Juno Avenue and it's a bulk carrier with its own cranes. Suddenly there's just us. 
side, we're moving it in now. They're going to let go our lines. We've just got to wait for the short side line handlers. Half tenders loose. to the next chamber. As the gates close, the water exchange begins and the water starts to come in. Here you can see the car carrier moving out towards the Atlantic with one chamber left for it to be lowered down to the level of the Atlantic. Okay, we finished in the last lock and all the boats are starting to move out now. We're now entering the Gatton Lake, a freshwater lake fed by the rivers of Panama. It's 85 feet above sea level. We will run in this lake for about two and a half hours. Here we are approaching Gamboa. Tower. Okay, so we've arrived and we're gonna tie up on the yellow buoy. And there's the boat waiting to pick up the pilot. And our line handlers are gonna do the tying up for us, which is cool. So there's a lot of stress on my part. The pilot boat drops off a line handler to assist the crew on board our boat. The pilot is giving me instruction telling me how close I am to the buoy. I decided to stay inside because of the heat. Once uh, we approach, the lines go on board and we get a forward spring, a back spring and a breast line fitted. Once the tie-up is done, then the pilot boat comes back in to take the pilot off the vessel. We've had a very pleasant evening and now this morning we're just watching the north traffic proceed up and we it's now uh, 0750 and we expect the pilot at 10 o'clock when we will proceed to head towards the Pedro Miguel locks. Here comes the Zim Bangkok. It's a 2023 container ship. We can see from the shore that the lake is at least six feet lower than it would normally be at this time of year and that has introduced severe restrictions in the number of transits. Currently they are operating around 20 transits a day. The pilot boat is Congo. Once the pilot boards we head down through the Galliot Cut towards the Centennial Bridge following a Merce container ship. We adjust our speed and are travelling at about 7 to 8 knots so that we can get down to the Pedro Miguel locks in time. Even then we had to wait for the sea trade vessel which we would follow into the chamber. Our lock buddy boat. Uh, it's full of tourists today.
Torbird goes past, we then begin our passage down the port side of the Sea Trade vessel with the port side of the our vessel close to the shore. We're proceeding at about six to six and a half knots um, and wary of any sort of bank effect from the ship or the shore. The Sea Trade vessel is moving as well with tugs and the reason we have to go past her is she's slowed down to take lines from the for the locomotives. This was quite a um, stressful situation and required a lot of attention. Here we have passed the Sea Trade vessel and are now proceeding into the Pedro Miguel lock and we will be rafting up to the ferry boat. So this is a tourist boat and people pay to do Panama tran Canal transits on this ferry boat. This is the same boat that was in the lock with us yesterday at Gatun Locks. And is are pulling hard against the cooling water that's gushing out from the ferry boat. Oh, I thought he'd stopped and now the trains are coming forward some more. Quite nerve wracking. We're almost under the bow. It feels like. I'm preparing lunch in the galley and I look out my back door and that's all I can see. Yikes. Left to right, the gates open. Karewa lets go. The ferry moves forward to tie up so that we can approach and tie up to the ferry boat again. Our thruster to starboard. Starboard. Yes, and the rudder to port. Starboard. Rudder to port. Vamos, mate esa línea y no la falla. Va. Segura ahí, Quickly. Okay, I'm Okay, Kata, let's go astern. Yeah, astern. Yeah. The ship behind us is pushing all the water forwards, you see. Yes. So we have to go astern to keep our position. You see the water getting pushed up against the gate from the ship that's moving in behind us. So we have to keep our engines astern, uh, going astern, so that we can maintain position. So that's what we so up ahead, we have the Pacific Ocean the other side of the world for us. Last year you hear about a ship that is passing into the canal that wasn't happening here. This is the Bridge of the Americas. Welcome to the Pacific Ocean. After passing under the Bridge of Americas, it's then a short run down to the pilot drop-off spot. The pilot, makes, the pilot vessel makes his approach from the stern while the pilot stands on the cap rail and then will step up to the pilot vessel as it comes in alongside Karawa. With the pilot safely disembarked, they drop back we increase our speed and with Panama City in the background the pilot vessel moves away 
as we proceed to our marina. Our thoughts about the transit of the canal are purely our thoughts and our experiences based on what, what we've seen. Obviously at a different time and a different place people have had uh, different experiences. Um, departure yesterday was quite interesting. We had over 20 knots of wind, closer to 25 knots of wind blowing um, out of the northeast and straight down the channel of Shelter Bay Marina. It meant that I had to execute a 180 degree turn with about 120 feet of space, no stern thruster. Uh, anyway, after a discussion with the um, Shelter Bay Marina staff, we led a line from the bow aft on the, um, on the dock we let go of the stern lines and allowed the, the wind to pull the stern out and we kept a line on the on the bow and allowed Kariwa to swing around. Uh, this execution worked out really well. Particularly as we don't have a stern thruster, we do have a bow thruster of course, we have one engine. And um, Kariwa is a 77 ton vessel. Anyway, having executed that we went out into the flats to await the pilot and there it was uh, three foot seas actually and we rowed it out bouncing a little bit there were some uh, sailing boats out there having a very rough time um, but even Kariwa was moving around quite a bit the pilot came alongside uh, because of the high freeboard on our boat, he was able to just step across and we proceeded to the first set of locks. Uh, the pilot, and we had a pilot, not an advisor, the pilot and I had a discussion about Car Carawas steering characteristics, the single engine, bow thruster only, uh, which way the propeller turned, uh, which way we went astern, and we discussed the fact that the wind was blowing 20 knots up the channel uh, with a current that moved uh, from east to west as you approached the locks. This was very noticeable at the first chamber um, but was much more uh, under control as you went up in the chambers 2 and 3 there was no current and the wind was less noticeable as well. Initially we were going to side tight to the, the side of the chamber despite many people saying that they wouldn't do it. I find it the easiest, the most sensible and the most usual. I certainly wasn't interested in nesting with another vessel. They then said would we tie up to a tug. Uh, with the tug tied to the chamber I was fine with that. They brought uh, a paper, a pilot boat came alongside and gave me a paper to sign to obviously absolve responsibility etc. And then they changed it again because the tug's capstan aka winch wasn't working and so in the end we ended up back side tying against the chamber. We were in the chamber with a Panamax ship for the old locks, i.e. the maximum size that could go in, had two feet either side. Behind it was two tugs and a ferry boat and then Kariwa. With all the boats in there, there was about 10 feet from the stern of Kariwa to the last lock and you couldn't put much else in there. It was very exciting for me having been through here first in 1977 and uh, subsequently on a number of occasions as a navigation officer. But it was also interesting from a purely maritime perspective watching the world trade go by. As far as when the uh, locks flooded we went up fairly seamlessly. The line handlers who were 
provided by our agent were very professional, very accomplished and kept the boat in the right place. Uh, with a little bit of bow thruster from me and a little bit of going astern just to keep the boat pulled in. Uh, the going up in the chambers went without incident. After we cleared the chamber we then proceeded down through the Gatton Lake. Uh, that took about two and a half to three hours and then we tied off here at Gamboa.